Hi everyone, so let's just show you how this mask goes on. So this is what the finished mask looks like with the bottom loop and then the ties at the top. And you just put the loop over top of your head. I'm going to have to take my glasses off to fit this. And you pull the ties, pull this over your head like this. Give the ties a pull. And you can play it tightening it, however way you need to. And you take the nose piece. Now I don't have it as tight as I'd like to. You can go back and fix the tightening. Once you've done it once, it's not a big deal. It's pretty easy to do. And you can get that nose piece in super secure so that it does not fog up your glasses. So you can see here, it's in there nice and snug, and um, yeah, there's no risk of anything on the sides, and I can get it a little snugger than what I currently have. So you get a really good coverage with it. I have three layers of fabric, and I can breathe easily through it. Well, I hope that you'll enjoy making this mask, so let's get to it. So let's just go ahead and do one. So I have my two pieces of um, the lining, the sheeting, whichever you're going to use, or the high quality cotton. And this is the eight and a half inches. This is the, the uh, height of the piece, just like your exterior. And you're, you're going to take that and you're going to fold it in half. So the height is this way. This thing is making a lot of noise. And then go ahead and press it. Of the full length. Your exterior piece, fold it in half, but all you need to do is just a little nip top and bottom. That's just to give you a center for lining it up when we put this together. So now with this one, you go ahead and measure two and a half inches down, and then we're going to go to the sewing machine. All right, so I've got my lining piece, and I'm going to put it with the fold side up, and you plant your needle on the, the fold line about a half an inch inwards, then you back stitch and go forward to your mark. Once you get to the mark, back stitch, then you pull your piece out, you move it, or not out, but you move it forward about a half an inch past your mark, back stitch to the mark, then move forward, back stitch, and that piece is done. We're going to go back to the ironing board. All right, back at the ironing board, I'm going to clip all those threads in between at the beginning. And now we're going to create the slit with the folding and pressing. Okay, so lay it on the board. Take one side. Better get in the camera, right? Take one side, fold it over. Onto the seam line and give it a press. Then you take the two layers, pull them apart like that so that it does, it creates the opening. And then that's done. And then what we're going to do is what I've done on the previous ones. You bar tack, and I'm going to try to get this up close to the camera so you guys can see this. You do a bar tack right here at the beginning and at the end of the opening so that it will secure it so it doesn't tear out because that's a high stress point. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be right back. So I did this the same way as I did the seam. I did the bar tack here and then I just pulled it down and did the other bar tack and then you just go ahead and cut your threads in between. 
and that's done. Now, if you were not wanting to put a removable mask, let's say you just, you know what, I'm just going to do three layers of this instead and make it a built-in one. You wouldn't go through all this. Uh, let me grab one that hasn't been done yet. You would just take your lining pieces and just stack them like this. That's it. And they would go into the mask like I'm about to show you with the one that has the slit. All right, so here's our piece that we have folded to give us little marks top and bottom. I can just, just see it. And then you take your lining piece and you line up seam with your little marks. And then we're going to go ahead and stitch this at a half an inch seam allowance, top and bottom. All right, so I have stitched it straight across. And there's a reason for having stitched it straight, straight across. Because you would think that normally you would kind of just start here, back stitch, go here, back stitch. But you don't need to. Just start at the very edge of your fabric, do the half inch seam allowance, and go straight across. And there's a reason for that. It'll make it a whole lot easier to, um, to press in the next step. It gives you a guideline is what it does. And I forgot to mention that these two go right sides together. So if your fabric does have a right side, you're going to put right sides together. Okay, now you turn it right side out. And then you're going to give it a press with the seam allowances going towards your exterior fabric. And now, see, there's your stitch lines become your mark. So you're not you're having to remark this half inch seam allowance. And just give it a press. And again, press towards the body. Okay, just press that. And just right along the seam line. All right, now with it towards, uh, with the um, right side up, this makes it so you can really see to make sure you don't have your lining showing at the top. Give it a press. And now we're ready to um, make the channel to put the wire in. And I tried doing it without, or doing it by having the wire inside and just putting the wire in after. I found it easy to not, easier to not have the wire on the inside. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna just going to go ahead and do the um, channel and then pop the wire in after because I found it's more of a nuisance. The only way to make it easier is to use a um, zipper foot, and I just totally dislike zipper feet because I don't find they feed well. Um, so I'm just not gonna do it that way. I prefer to pop the wire in after. All right, so I've got my ends all bent. Again, this is just stainless steel wire. It's not the plastic coated garden wire, which I would prefer, but this is what I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch a 3 8 inch channel. And just to make it even and make it look nice, I'm going to go ahead and do it top and bottom. But the wire is going to go in the top if you have a directional print. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that at the machine. 3 8 inch channel. All right, so I've stitched the 3 8 of an inch channel top and bottom all the way across again it just saves back stitching and there's no reason that that stitching can't be there it's quicker rather than back stitching all right so next part you if you have a directional fabric make sure you've picked the top to slide your wire in all 
and center it. There we go. Now with the iron, if you have, you know, you, you're not that great at ironing, you'll do this next step in two steps. If you're used to hemming really good with the iron, you can do it in one. And I'll show you both ways here. Okay, so you're going to fold to the raw edge of your lining. And then you fold it again. So that encloses all your raw edges. And it reduces the bulk by having it the lining shorter. So you can do that in two steps. Or you get pretty good at this once you've done it a few times. Just fold to the edge and hold it with your fingers and then go ahead and roll it again and then grab the iron and you've got to you know you've got to hold it you can't just let it flop there and if this is sticking out a little bit just go ahead and poke them in getting rid of whatever threads I inevitably miss threads no you're not the only one Okay, so there, and just clip all the threads. So those are the channels for the um, feels like one side's not. It's a little wider than the other one. I'm just going to tweak it a little bit. Okay. So there's the channel for the cord. And what I did with this, because I am really low on supplies, I had some half inch twill tape, which is a real nuisance if you're going to do it this way. What I did is I folded my twill tape in half, stitching it down, and then I knotted the ends so it's just like a cord. And we're going to lay that in the channel and we're going to um, finish it. And the way to do this all in one step, you go ahead, you lay it at the top of the mask. So where your wire is, you lay it at the top and then flip it to this side and we're going to go to the, to the sewing machine. All right, so I've got it encased in here, more or less, not quite there. You're going to tuck it in and I need to see where, because I'm going to be stitching from the other side, I want to see where this is going to line up. So that's, that's too far into the middle. And in this case, I can go to 5 8 I'm pretty sure when I did it with a cord, it was only a half an inch seam. So it, 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 it depends how thick your cord is and everything, where you're going to put it. Just You just want to make sure that you get it in there. So you backstitch. I like my needle down position. Grab a hold of your cord so it's right into that fold, making sure that um, you're folded properly. And then just stitch this down. And then take the cord and the mask and you're going to kind of flip this around here. Alright, so I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to twirl it around and I'm going to take the cord and I'm going to sandwich him in to the next area, making sure my layers are all lined up. I'm not going to worry about the bottom right now. I'm just trying to get that top part secured. Then you can go ahead and grab the bottom of the cord, give it a tug. Use your fingers to make sure he's all sandwiched in there. All the way down. And pull it out. So we've got just threads to clip and the mask is done. And you can see how quick that was to whip together. Super simple, thin layers. Not going to be trashing your machine trying to go through all these thick layers. And there's the ties at the top, bottom of the mask. Oops, 
let's get this out so you guys can see better. It's the bottom of the mask and the ties up here. And that's the basic construction of the mask, guys. So I will try to put together some more to the video um, that will deal with assembly line um, because you can really, really, really cut your time down if you learn how to work assembly line, and this is a perfect candidate for it. So I hope you enjoy the mask. Give it, um, the video a thumbs up if you like it. And um, I really, really hope this ends up being a blessing to our uh, frontline workers amid this COVID. And just want you guys to all know that um, there's a lot of people praying for you. And um, we all appreciate the job that you're doing. Thank you so much.